Good Saturday morning, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A little bit late this morning, but we're on with, again, the updated forecast to give you an idea as to what's going on across the Mid-South area into the rest of the weekend, which does include the possibility of some scattered showers out there and maybe some thunderstorms as we get into around the early portion of Sunday evening. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Got questions about the forecast? If you can't stick around for the whole thing, blue bar right there showing the scroll text that's where you can get the entire forecast or you can get the seven day forecast lower left hand corner of your screen by going to wreg.com slash weather much more mild temperatures across the mid-south than what we have seen in quite some time so looking a lot better for this morning temperatures helping that snow and ice to melt off and getting a lot better conditions out there for rain which might help to wash off some of those chemicals on the roadway that we use to melt the snow and ice so looking a little bit better out there and i'm just betting that the car wash are going to be exceptionally busy for later on today, so something to plan on there. If you've got any comments about the forecast, drop them into the comments section. We want to know where you're from and what the temperatures are like across the Mid-South if you're in and around that particular area. But if you're from outside the Mid-South, welcome to our netcast. And if you have any, again, uh, updates on your current conditions out there, wherever you may happen to be, let's see some temperatures, let's see some wind speeds, let's see some pictures. If you got them, drop them into the comments section. Sunrise, sunset, ice on the ground, nice sunny waves with tropical locations. Locations. Go ahead and drop those in there. We'd love to see a little bit more about that. Coming up in just a little bit, more of your pictures and a little bit more about how you can get ready for severe weather in the Mid-South. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Welcome to everybody who's checking in already on Facebook, on our main Facebook page, facebook.com slash WREG3. Stick around for a lot more coming up here in just a little bit. But once again, if you can't stick around, here's the forecast in a nutshell. Back, it's with more chances of drizzle mainly, not looking at gully washers or flash flooding, that's for certain, but we will see again the potential for some areas of rainfall across portions of the Mid-South off and on throughout the rest of the day. So if you want to take the umbrella along with you just to be on the safe side, you might want to conclude that if you're not going to be back, especially until late tonight or early tomorrow morning or not back until Monday morning when we're going to be seeing a lot better chances of rainfall, but more on that coming up here in just a little bit. As of right now, a lot of snow and ice across the area around the Great Smoky Mountains National Park from Purchase Knob. A lot of snow and ice here, and again, a little bit less in the way of leaves on the trees for right now, so fully into the dead of winter for the time being. And going to continue to see some fairly chilly conditions out there for right now. A little closer to home, brief sunrise illuminating eastern Arkansas early this morning. Live picture of Big River Crossing, I-55, West Memphis out there on the horizon, and mainly cloudy skies across much of the Mid-South for the time being at this point in time. So again, thanks a lot for everybody for joining us. Let's see who we got here. Tony Hayes, good morning from U of M. I'm assuming that's either University of Memphis or University of Mississippi. 42 degrees there. Thank you very much. Billy Light Lightning, appropriate name for a weathercast. Very nicely done. 40 degrees from Batesville, Mississippi. Thank you very much for checking on in and everybody else who's poking in for this morning. Thanks a lot for dropping by for our netcast for the time being. Into around the area of Germantown, looking back, again, a little bit of sunshine out there poking through the clouds, but back toward around the, top, the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall, Poplar Pike in Germantown, and the water towers north of Germantown High School. Again, not doing too bad. Bit on the brisk side, mid-40s for the time being, and just a bit of a wind chill. Not seeing, again, totally warm conditions out there. Numbers back into around the lower 40s. Here's the other thing right now. The humidity level is very dry, so any rain that moves in, that warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico is going to have to overpower this very dry air. So until we get that moving our way, we're not going to be seeing too much rain fall anytime soon across much of the area. Marshall two-point typeface and bifocals don't work. Marshall Border from Jonesboro, Arkansas, 44 degrees there. Thank you very much uh, for dropping on through and everybody else for checking in as well. 42 degrees in Ruther and Nice, Ricky Lee. Not too sure where that one is, but uh, we'll have to see if we can get an update from you on that one. Rest of the morning, again, mainly cloudy out there. We have been, uh, again, watching this area around Poplar and 240. Apparently some construction scheduled early this morning, which either wrapped up or has postponed. So there's no construction trucks or the authorities watching the site for right now. 
So it looks like traffic in all directions, including the exit ramp, which was blocked off heading to Poplar eastbound, is uh, right now open and everything is moving. So good news on that if you're going to be traveling around the east side of the 240 Super Collider. Again, that's right about there on the maps into around Poplar and 240. Rest of the area, Storm Tracker 3S, we've ramped up the sensitivity. We're not seeing anything in the way of precipitation across the Mid-South. We will continue to monitor for that throughout the rest of the weekend. And again, possibility of thunderstorms later on toward about Sunday evening or so, and that's going to be about the main thing that we're going to be looking for later on. The moisture we're looking for is down here around the Gulf of Mexico. It is moving our direction, but it's going to take a while. Again, got some clouds out there, that's true, but what we have underneath those clouds down toward the surface is a lot of very dry air. So even if this moves up here immediately, it's going to have to overpower all that dry air at the surface because otherwise the rain is going to fall into that dry air and just get shredded on the way down. Dry air is just going to rip that stuff apart. It'll evaporate it and we won't see too much of anything else out there. Uh, Pamela Baker Sellers, 45 degrees in Mercer, Tennessee. Thanks for joining us. Teresa M. Curry, 41 in Boonville, Mississippi. Thank you very much. Brad Stanley, 49 in Kosciuszko. I've never been able to pronounce that town correctly. I'm terribly sorry about that. Hope I made a decent approach right there. Brownsville, 45 degrees. Audrey Lovett, thank you very much. Megian, Megian, Megian Dress, Dressler, hope I'm saying that correctly, 41 degrees in Senatobia. Thank you very much uh, for joining us there. Current temperatures across the Mid-South, and when we say live, we mean live. Again, within a couple of seconds, live real-time weather from the Weatherbug Network that you can get at WRHE.com. Currently back in the mid to upper 40s with, again, winds occasionally breezy, but not seeing, again, a lot of wind chills out there for right now. And temperatures will continue to be, again, a little bit on the brisk side. We do still have a couple of wind chills near the lower 30s across portions of the Mid-South, but not anything huge. Definitely not like what we were seeing a few days ago. No question about that. So again, very much on the quiet side, and at least we're not seeing anything in the way of major amounts of problems with the frigid temperatures that we saw last week. That air-conditioned deep freeze is gone and will be staying gone for the course of the next several days. More on that in just a little bit. Teresa Andrasudi, hope I'm saying that correctly. Jack Blabber Blabber loves News Channel 3 weather. Thank you very much. Brad Stanley, thank you very much. I just wanted to make certain I got at least fairly close to that anyway. Uh, next Jabber Blabber forecast, if you haven't seen it, the kids' newspaper that comes up at 10 minutes past 6 o'clock, Monday through Friday. Todd Demers usually has that. So again, stick around for more on that on News Channel 3 Daybreak. All right, let's go ahead and run the numbers and show you what we've got going on. Midday temperatures, mainly mid to upper 40s, mostly cloudy skies. Again, could be some gaps in the clouds out there. So some sunshine coming and going but otherwise not seeing, again, a totally sunny day. There will be chances of showers here and there. This is an updated forecast from what you saw earlier on daybreak, so we do have better chances of rain toward this afternoon. Again, wobbling through the area from time to time. We may see some showers around South Haven, Coldwater, Batesville, and then not much going on in Dyersburg, the Boot Hill, or up toward Jonesboro, and then repeat that and reverse it later on to where we get more showers later on tonight toward News Channel 3 at 10, but then south of I-40, not much of anything picking up. Keep in mind, this is just one computer model's opinion, so there will be chances of rain off and on throughout the entire area throughout the rest of the day and into this evening. So Keep that in mind if you're going to be doing anything outdoors coming up into the course of the rest of the day and especially into this evening as well. Again, currently seeing the chances of rainfall really starting to ramp up as we go past daybreak tomorrow morning and into around lunchtime. More chances for rainfall into the afternoon. Check out some of these numbers. If the snow melt isn't happening where you are right now, it, most of these numbers should help out on that. Mid to upper 60s as that wind continues to bring in that warm, moist air and the temperatures tomorrow will be wet way higher than what they have been over the last week to 10 days almost. So seeing some much improved numbers here. Now going into Sunday night, especially as we look a little farther back to the west, storm system passing us to the north. It's going to be coming out of Colorado and the Rockies and a fairly strong system. Most of the energy is going to go well to our north. But by News Channel 3 at 10 Sunday night, we could be looking at a squall line developing back to the west of us and then moving into the Mid-South right about the time News Channel 3's Todd Demers is about ready to go on the air for daybreak. Temperatures will be in the 50s, so we don't have anything to worry about in the way of frozen precipitation out there. So again, something uh, looking again a little bit less in the way of anything snow or ice related. 
Could be the potential of some stronger weather here, kind of, sort of. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But right about the time we hit daybreak on Monday, this is where we see, again, showers and thunderstorms start to ramp up and move our direction. And then passing through the Mid-South right about the time we hit daybreak, Corey Ventura will probably have a lot, unfortunately, to talk about with Time Saver traffic on Monday morning. And Todd, of course, will have more to talk about with daybreak on the weather scheme as the rain sticks around and causes some wet conditions. Either way, traveling late Sunday night or early Monday morning, you're going to have to deal with that potential of rainfall, which means slower roadways. Sadly, unfortunately, the possibility of more accidents and backups out there. And through the rest of the morning, as long as that rain sticks around those wet roadways, Anytime you drive on wet roadways, the whole physics of driving changes. So you've got to be prepared to allow for a lot of extra time and a lot of extra space between you and the vehicle in front of you. No crowd bumping up together, no getting that close to the vehicles. Uh, again, paying attention to what's going on on the roadways is going to be one of the best things you can possibly do. If this isn't weather for defensive driving, I don't know what is. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be heading out the door in that area for right now. Uh, Betty Livingston, rain is fine, no ice or snow please. I think we can handle that for right now. Uh, let's see, anybody else checking in with weather at this point in time? Uh, Dr. Versa Harvard, Harvard, Harvard Brown from Benjamin L. Hook's Job Corps Center from Central Library. Very cool to uh, see you checking in for this morning. Thank you very much for that. And again, looking forward to getting back there. i got some books i got to turn back in again uh, pretty soon, and my wife has some for that matter. Thank you for reminding me about that. All right, severe weather potential, nothing being seen across the area for today. But tomorrow, looking back to the southwest of us, there's going to be a marginal threat. Now, this is not a severe weather outbreak by any stretch of the imagination, but there is going to be the potential, the highest potential for severe weather. Sunday afternoon and evening will begin here in the afternoon and evening. This will be the best possibility for severe weather. It's not great, but it's still a possibility. The light green here, that's just a forecast for just generic thunderstorms, not severe, and some of that goes right into the Mid-South area. Now, according to the Storm Prediction Center, the latest forecast has it here for Sunday and then dropping down to around the Gulf Coast states as we go into Monday. So this might give us a glancing blow as we get into late Sunday, early Monday morning again, mainly past about midnight or so. If there's any watches or anything like that coming up, we'll let you know as soon as we get them from the Storm Prediction Center. But so far, it does not look to be a direct impact on the area. If anything changes on that, keep it tuned again to the weather experts, and we'll keep you updated on that throughout the course of the rest of the weekend. All right, let's run the numbers into the forecast and show you what's going to be going on into the area and give you an idea as to what's going on for the rest of the weekend today. Very close to normal, which is about the upper 40s to lower 50s, so this is going to be looking a lot better. But chances of light showers will be sticking around throughout the area. Now tomorrow, more chances of showers add into that by afternoon and evening, especially late during the evening, News Channel 3 at 5, News Channel 3 at 10, more chances of thunderstorms, and especially after midnight into very early Monday morning, which means, again, for commute time, we could be seeing some pretty sloppy conditions out there. So if you're traveling for work or school, plan on, again, allowing a lot of extra time to get out the door as we see those chances of rain finally make their way out of the picture as we go toward about Monday or so. Rest of the week, again, a bit chilly in the morning, lower to mid-30s, but nowhere near the ice box that we saw from a few days ago. Lower to mid-50s for highs, just above normal. So a nice way to kind of round out the second to last week of January, looking a lot more pleasant out there. Well, I guess it is just about the last week or so as we go into next weekend. Another chance of showers by about Friday. And then getting into around next Saturday, scattered chance of showers, but once again, 10 days in advance. The forecast at this point in time is more of a suggestion than anything else. So it's looking a little cooler, looking like more chances of rainfall. But again, this is going to come more into focus as we get a little closer towards next weekend. So stay tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on that potential out there for right now. Thanks to everybody for some great pictures across the Mid-South. James underscore R underscore Gulledge from, I believe, around Humboldt. Nice view of some blue skies and some clouds into and around the area. Temperatures back in the 40s, melting some of the snow, but at least a few breaks in the clouds out there. Beautiful sunrise picture. Thank you, Mr. Kelvin Gates from the Shelby Farms area. Beautiful view from around that area this morning, and... 
totally fangirling about this yesterday. Really cool to see this happening. The International Blues Challenge 2018 from the Blues Foundation taking place in the Bluff City over the weekend. And Steven Van Zant made his way to the studio yesterday along with a couple of blues musicians to talk a little bit more about what the Blues Challenge was all about. Alex Coleman got this picture snapped of the two of them, and he even offered to do the weather yesterday, which was just like really cool to meet this part of music history out there. So kind of need to have him in the studio for there. Well, Alex and Steven as well. If you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them so we can feature them on netcasts just like this. But if you don't send them, I can't show them. So you see we've got a bit of a minor problem there if you don't send things in. So something to think about. If you can send them in, aonic underscore WRAG three on Twitter, Aonic no underscore necessary, WREG3, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash Austinonic, WREG. Now, severe weather. We are in the prime time severe weather for the Mid-South area from roughly January through about early May or so, and now, when nothing is going on, is the time to get ready for it. And if you'd like to know more about what you can do to get ready for severe weather, there are classes called Skywarn. It's a volunteer group. You don't get paid for it, but your efforts can help to make certain that everybody is well prepared for severe weather. Your eyes, your ears, your brain can help everybody else stay safe. If you see something happening around the Mid-South, you take this course, you learn what to spot, you call it back to the National Weather Service in Memphis. They let people like me know so I can let everybody know what is going on, and that is going to in turn help everybody stay safer. The more people we have spotting for storms, the better off, the more safe we are all going to be. So if you'd like to know more about this, National Weather Service in Memphis is the place to go. And there'll be plenty more meetings taking place across the Mid-South over the course of the next several weeks. Now, the first one has been scheduled. It's going to be coming up at the Emmett Till Interpretive Center. It's going to be in Sumner, Mississippi. That's 120 North Court Street, Tuesday, February 13th, beginning at 6 p.m. There's about maybe a dozen of these meetings scheduled across the Mid-South. And again, they'll be, we'll be updating this over the course of the next few weeks to let you know. A week after that, Cross County at the Wynn Fire Department, 1111 North Falls Boulevard in Wynn, Arkansas. Next one after that will be two days later at February 22nd at Henderson County Emergency Operations Center in Lexington, Tennessee. That's on Natchez Trace Drive. And then after that, Thursday, March the 1st, Gibson County Emergency Operations Center in Trenton, Tennessee, 1246 Manufacturer's Row. These meetings last about an hour, hour and a half, two hours, depending on how many questions are asked. It's your opportunity to learn more about how to get yourself prepared before severe weather hits. It's a great way to learn what goes on in a particular area when it comes to weather. It's a great way to ask questions of the National Weather Service in Memphis. And if you'd like to know more about this, all you have to do is go to our website or the National Weather Service website or on Facebook, and we'll have more about this over the next few weeks. Where is the one for Memphis and Shelby County? It's not happening yet, but it will be, and we'll announce that over the course of the next few weeks. So stay tuned for more on that, and we'll keep you updated. Or again, Go to my various social media networks, and we'll keep you updated on there as well. And, of course, I'll have forecasts for you throughout the rest of the weekend on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, Country 92.5, Oldies 102.3, and I'll be back on the air with Bob and Josh coming up bright and early Monday morning at 8 o'clock on TalkBack Live. Can't get the signal on AM 730? Dial them up on the web at TalkBackLiveNetwork.org, and you can find out a little bit more about what to do there. Billy Lightning, advanced member of Skywarn, very good good. Glad to hear about that. Uh, Two more months of winter. Yeah, well, you know, just some good news, some bad news out across the area. Uh, Thanks to everybody for checking on in for this morning. Appreciate you checking in for this morning. We'll have more details coming up on the forecast again tonight on News Channel 3 at 5, 6, and 10, so stay tuned for that. You can also find out more on my various social media pages. Glad to have you along for the ride. Again, drop by, subscribe, let's uh, get the updates here, and we'll keep you updated with tons of stuff. I tend to cram my social media pages full of science, weather, technology, space information, astronomy, All kinds of general geekery, so if you like stuff like that, glad to have you along and stick around for a ton more coming up this weekend and into around uh, early portion of next week. Also a lot about rescue animals out there. There's tons of animals that could use adopting, so if you'd like to know more about Mid-South animal shelters that keep the, the pets safe until they can find their forever family, great place to go to on that to find out a lot more. Also details at our main website, wreg.com slash weather. Again, great opportunity to keep up to date on our forecast throughout the course 
of the rest of the weekend. That'll wrap it up for Saturday morning. We'll have more details later on tonight, so stay tuned for more information there, and stay tuned for more coming up with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend. Thanks to everybody for joining us for today's exclusive update of News Channel 3's video weather blog, Weather Overtime.